domestic abuse yeah. cases increase if a football team either wins or loses. So it's like men are exactly. so overly emotional about these things that it actually that hurts. Matter, so. It hurts women. Exactly. Like if we lose a crystal, we're not beating up yeah, our husbands. Exactly. So. It's up for you, Missy Moo. Missy Moo. Oh, I'm sorry, I scared her away. Wait, that's so much. Yeah, so it's two. Oh, yeah, yeah they're it's the like, same thing. I thought we both got the same ones. I, I hate the way they don't give chopsticks anymore. Free, spring rolls. Yeah, it's a bit scabby. Yeah. For seven euro. Jesus. Are you joking? Yay. Yay. We better make a tough nail. What? <laughs> I think Jesus is that again. No. I want to try spring roll first. Yeah, to be honest. Same. I'll say that's so true. Oh, they're really hot. Mmm. Mmm. And that Galway place that they make there on that milk for breakfast. Where? The Galway uh, breakfast place. Cafe Temple? Yeah. They close down, you know. Mm. They're not so sad. The rent was too expensive. Oh my god. Yeah. <coughs> it could it's be. Um, is soy sauce. No, I think it's gyoza sauce. It's like mixed with rice vinegar. Uh, it's like soy sauce and rice vinegar, oh. yeah. But still, it'll still be nice with yeah. sushi. Mmm. Yum. Tips for living back with parents after uni or living independently, especially if you clash and argue. It depends what you clash and argue about, but trying to be as independent as you, as you can. I don't think it's a good time to try to fix your relationship. Your relationship will get better if you are not living with them. For now, you kind of just have to bite your tongue and kind of just stay in your lane and stay out of their way. And leave the house as much as you can and try not to like disrupt them as much as you can and just like stay in your room and just try to get out of the house and try to stay at your friend's house as much as you can and like try not take anything that they say personally because they're just going to say get all their shit on you. It depends on the type of parents they are as well but if you mm -hmm. clash and argue I'd say they were used to having you not around too so it's mm -hmm. like an adjustment for them. Mm -hmm. Treat them how you would any other housemate like mm -hmm. With respect and... And don't be offended that they don't want you there. And the dynamic is going to be way different to when you were a child. <laughs> Obviously be really sure you're bad because they're your parents, but... Yeah. And they'll probably get back into the swing of like treating you like a child mm. even though you're not one. Mm. Which can be really hard yeah. thing for them to not do. What I always do as well, whatever makes me feel better, if I get in a fight with like my one of my parents and it's like really bad, I always just think like... There's so many people that fight like this with their parents and there's so many so many people who clash with their parents. Do you know what I mean? And it's actually fine, you just need to move out and then once you move out you can build a relationship but for now you just have to kind of pretend you don't have feelings to them and don't try and fix a problem with them. It was hard when I moved back into dads but mm, yeah. I didn't clash or argue with them as much as I thought I would be because mm. when I lived with them to begin with like I was a tyrant of a teenager mm. and like Caroline was a new step stepmom person. Yeah. I wasn't related to her so mm. I, did, I kind of didn't trust her but our relationship is so much better now so mm. when I was living with them it was really nice and I was like with my partner you yeah. know it's just really it's so invasive for them it was mm. so nice for them to do mm. I suppose when you're an adult as well you appreciate being having the ability to live with your parents mm. when you need to yeah so I was just more grateful that I had a room yeah. there yeah they talk to you differently like they talk to you like an adult so mm. it's like different like moving into because i just moved into my dad's i've always lived with my mom moving into dad is completely different as well because they're not like i think like why me and dad didn't have like that good of a relationship was because he didn't really know how to parent me and it was like awkward when he parented me and then i didn't really well i didn't really respect mom and dad as a parent but like i would like clash the way he like parented me it was just weird and i didn't respect his authority if you get me yeah but now it's like we're both adults so we can talk and there's not as many uh. there's not as many boundaries on like what we can talk about mm. and like i feel really comfortable talking about anything with them do you know what i mean and he can kind of respect me as, as an adult and i can respect him as, as an adult and actually look at his i look at it i look at him as a person rather mm. than my dad i'd be like do i like i like him as a person and i like what he believes and stuff and shit like that yeah because probably and being able to drink with your parents is so good as well that is good and if he's not trying, if he's not talking to you from like a, an authoritarian mm. position, it's way nicer. It's like mm. more of a friendship. You you like appreciate their advice more mm. for some reason because mm. it doesn't feel like a lecture or like that they're judging you. Exactly. Or they're treating you like you're stupid. Mm. How do you genuinely find motivation? What I do is as soon as I wake up, I put on affirmations because that just 
genuinely I have to put that on or else I want to smash my head against the wall and when I wake up I literally when I'm half asleep and even in my dreams I'm doing affirmations I'm like that's I'm so gonna, good even in my dreams I'm half asleep in my dream as soon as I wake up I go I'm a magnet to my divine counterpart because there's <laughs> there's a lot there's a list on my phone and I literally listen mm -hmm. off at, when I wake up because you know the way you distract yourself because you you escape your thoughts but if you yeah. just instead are just like I just say that opposite like out loud like as many times as you can and that that motivates me straight away and also cleaning my room motivates me to be productive and going on Pinterest motivates me making things aesthetically pleasing and making like your workspace aesthetically pleasing just mm -hmm. helps so much and having intention I don't know what you want motivation for but like for me I need motivation to like do my art so that's like kind of hard sometimes because it's like you if you have no inspiration you just like are fucked and also when you're making art you have to kind of face yourself in a way where it's like ever it's kind of hard to not like see your art as a reflection on who you are so it's really hard <coughs> to not be harsh on what you're like making but what i do is i whenever i sit to do art i pray and then i go i'm open to receiving all of your genius ideas i'm open to receiving all love and i'm open to receiving uh, blessings and everything and then literally when i do that then i get all the good shit comes out and i get all the good ideas and i just get really excited and also like listening to music and shit like that and just praying and having intention with everything that you do just helps i find it so easy to like sit in my bed on my phone all day like the hardest thing for me to, uh, when i wake up in the morning it's not just like go on my phone yeah because then I'll, yeah. Actually, I'll be there for hours Same. so i either keep my phone in the neck and i i'm the person who doesn't need an alarm so like i have no excuse for my phone to be next to me yeah so i either keep it in the next room or i have it like on jason's side of the bed mm. so it's just like not in access but i have my book always really near me so now when i wake up in the morning I've like made my f fed Missy make a coffee and then read my book mm -hmm. and then after that I've just done one thing that's not gone on my mm -hmm. phone so and then you're like okay I'll see how long I can go now exactly and now Emer's like oh you're sleeping in because so I'm not texting her at six in the morning mm -hmm. but I'm like I'm actually just on my phone mm -hmm. so um, yeah that's so true it's so good if you do if you don't it's actually it's, it changes your day if you don't go on your phone in the morning it makes such a difference it makes such a difference and it makes it like fun do you know what I mean because mm -hmm. you're like oh I'm excited for my coffee I'm excited for like do you know what I mean? And reward yourself with like, I'm, a, I'm allowing myself to have my coffee if I do this and I'm allowing myself to do this if I do this. Do you know what I mean? I find the more you do that as well, the less you actually want to be on your phone. Mm -hmm. You're like bored. Exactly, exactly. So I just but once It's just once you're in the in the habit of being on your phone, that's all you want to do. But mm. once you like get a taste of what it's like without it, then you just like love that, you mm. know what I mean? And having a clean space makes such a difference too. Mm. You like what you were saying. Yeah. If your space isn't clean, like you're not going to be in the mood to do yeah. anything because mm. you'll just feel horrible in your space. You have to make it like your sanctuary so exactly. that you're able to motivate yourself and feel good. Exactly. Um, especially now because I have to be at home a lot mm. and like I barely, rarely leave the house and I have nowhere else, like this is my home. Yeah. So yeah. I Where are you? I'm on my lunch right now, so are you in the house yet? Yeah, me and Saoirse are here. Yeah. Yeah, it is a bit sunny. You're so hung. She's gonna be so jealous. Do you want me to put some sauce rolls on for you? No, there's no avocado. Okay, no problem. Okay, see you soon. Bye. Are you gonna eat that? No, you have that. Can I have a spring roll? Yeah. Oh, it's eating me. After I digest food, my body is literally like shaking with hunger. So annoying. <laughs> you know when you start to feel sick because you're yeah, so hungry, it's like yeah. that. And I'm like, oh Jesus. Oh my god. Like I'm about to faint. That's horrible. Because she's just like, nom nom nom. Uh, <laughs> There's this hormone called progesterone, which is released when you're pregnant. And what it does is it makes your organs and your muscles like loose so that they can move around inside your body to make room for the uterus. But it also makes the top of the bottom of your uh, um, esophagus loose. So that if you like burp or something, you could accidentally puke like all the time because there's no muscles oh holding it, holding it tight. Oh and, but sometimes if she like randomly kicks me, there's like a hard bubble of bo um not bile but the like acid from bile that like go shoots up mm. my es esophagus. So if I eat too much, obviously my stomach is way smaller now because there's no room for it. If I eat too much, it's like I I'm gonna puke now. If I have another bite, I'll puke. 
Oh my god. <laughs> like, I'm enjoying myself, yeah. I'm enjoying myself. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh, I'll have another bite. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you feel like you're going to get sick or it's just random? No, it's I like suppose. when I'm eating, which, which is so annoying because I could be really enjoying the food and then randomly I like still have some left over and then it's just like, oh, I'm going to vomit. Oh my god. And it's like the texture of it going down your esophagus is like, <gasps> oh my god. But then I just, I need to let it sit there for a while, I digest it yeah. and then I keep going. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just like, <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. I'm like we take a break and I'm just like nom, nom. <laughs> so now how to be content on your own slash living on your own and avoiding being lonely having a good routine makes you feel really safe if you feel lonely trying to figure out why you feel lonely like what is it, the thing that you're you want if it's validation or if it's like affection or if it's intimacy what what is the root to that problem if you know what I mean for me it's like I think I'm lonely but I'm actually not it's just I feel like I should be going out because everyone else is going out even though I'm an introvert if I look at other people's stories on Instagram everyone's out with their friends and then I think oh I should be out with my friends that makes me that would make me a well-rounded like likable person if I had the all, all of these friends that means that I'm a good person because that's what everyone like you're just conditioned to think but it's actually obviously not real and it's stupid and you're actually so much happier by yourself and a lot more kind you can be a lot more content by yourself so what I did for loneliness is I followed everyone on Instagram because I don't want to see I don't want to be forced to consume everyone else's lives because it's not real and it just makes me feel shit about myself I don't go on social media as well I get too focused on what, what other people think of me whatever uh, I think or I feel I feel lonely I go oh everyone must think that I'm a loser everyone must think that I'm like this I try instead of going to other people's heads I go into my own head head and I'm like how do I feel and what do I need right now and what do I want to do and I try to as well when I'm alone because there's so many things that you can do alone that you can't do with other people there's so many things you can enjoy so much more when you're alone rather than other people you get to dance when you're on your own like however you want you get to like really carefully consume things and enjoy things when you're by yourself and there's no no one else there to kind of disturb you and obviously I'm an introvert so that's obviously kind of biased but I feel like everyone can have that where you can enjoy things so much more and look at things so much more carefully when you're by yourself just kind of figuring out what you like to do I, 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 I like to do yoga when I'm by myself and that really helps kind of like connect you know, to the, to the earth and then you kind of feel connected to everything. And being out in nature is so nice for loneliness. I don't really, I'm not much of a journal kind of girl. Um, I like to connect with my inner child and I think of things I, that I want to do, that, I, that I'd want to do if I was a kid and what excited me when I was a kid. Because there's always so many things that excite me, but I don't do them because I'm like, oh, I'm an adult, I shouldn't do that. Or, oh, I shouldn't do that because it doesn't make money or oh, I shouldn't do that because it's not productive. It's productive if you are enjoying whatever you want to do and you're enjoying it if it's for your own good for your own creativity and for to kind of like build a relationship with yourself it's always productive to you know to do taking care of yourself is doing what you want to do and doing what feels good for you being by yourself is the most amazing thing you can ever do because you realize what what actually matters to you and then once you realize what matters to you and what's important you're not going to do all these things that you don't actually want to do but there's so many things that you do we don't actually want to do it's just because everyone else is doing it you feel like you should but you kind of realize those things and then you start just enjoying life more because you you do it more carefully and with more intention i also have like searsha days where i like do all my favorite things i go to my the shop like if my mom's away or something i'll go to the shop and get oranges and shop croissant and then i'll have an iced coffee and then i'll have that at home and then i go and do um to the charity shop and i and I look for like fabric and stuff like that. Cook dinner and then watch Love Island. And it's my favorite thing ever. That's like my favorite thing ever and I get so happy. Sometimes when I feel lonely, I'm just like scared to be on my own. Cause I'm like, I know I'm gonna go into a, d a pit of despair yeah. if I'm gonna be left alone. So I'm just, I just get like panicky. Mm. Once you get over that fear mm. and you like face your emotions or whatever, it's so much better. But I do have to, I, cause I, I think I'm more extroverted than you, but I'm mm. also, I run out of steam so yeah. fast. Yeah. I'm not as extroverted as Ellie, mm. but so I don't need it to like fuel me, mm. but I do need it every once in a while mm. or I will start to feel mm. insane. Mm. And Jason doesn't really count. Cause when you're in a romantic partnership, it's like they're a part of you. Yeah, so exactly. it's not like you're actually socializing. Yeah. 
yeah. that makes sense. Because they're like home. You yeah, know, exactly. You something to kind of give you a bit of an adrenaline. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. What I've done for myself is obviously being pregnant is so lonely mm. as well because no one, none of my friends can like relate to what I'm going through or they still treat me like that. I can still act like I usually do mm. when most of the time I can't even like leave the house or whatever. Mm. So I just make sure to like make actual regimented plans with my friends mm. rather than spontaneous ones because mm. You have to plan in advance more so if your like movements are limited. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I make sure to do like what like at least one thing a week. Yeah, and sometimes that's not possible, which mm -hmm. is fine. Mm -hmm. I've communicated to my friends, being like, mm -hmm. I can't travel anymore, so you're gonna have to come over to me mm -hmm. or like do something in town, mm -hmm. which is grand because then they're like, yeah, of course. Yeah. But you just have to communicate that because sometimes yeah. then you make a plan. And it's like when it comes to it, you're feeling sick or tired, yeah. and That's then it's just hard. Yeah, it's just like you feel like a piece of shit. Because you emotionally don't want to be there, but you physically can't have to be there. Mm. That's horrible. Yeah. And you can't even don't even have the energy to socialize, but you really want to socialize. Yeah. So like when we go to JT Pims or whatever with the family, I'm just like, oh my god, I'm so out of steam. Especially as well because drink is so like. Not that you're like a big drinker, but drink is, it's such a crutch. It's its mm. like, I'll, I like rarely see people without drinking. Do you know what I mean? And if I do, it's like really hard to do it all the time because you get really tired. But if you're drinking, it's like you're so much more about motivated to leave the house and like able to, obviously you can anyway, but able to leave the house because you're like, oh, well, after a drink, I'll loosen up and then I won't have to worry about it. Oh, I won't be as self-conscious. But it must be so tiring that you're just like stone cold sober and everyone's just like, Lucy goosey and you can't even loosen up because you're just like I'm pregnant and this is just not even good. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Oh my god, there's a burn on my belly button from the cigarette burn the other day. Oh my god. Look. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Oh my god. So hot. <laughs> it's like the worst thing ever. Like I burnt you with a cigarette. Oh my and belly button. Belly button. <laughs> like, oh my god. So funny. I'm sorry. I'm she was like, ow! Get her out! So in between. Yeah, I am so in between. So it really depends on my mood. I feel like you're a socially awkward extrovert. Yeah, I am so yeah, socially awkward. Yeah. And I feel like people expect me to be real confident so yeah. they're like, yeah, they're like, yeah. Do something. Yeah, yeah. yeah they're yeah. like, make a joke. Yeah, yeah. And I'm just like yeah, yeah. So yeah. maybe I, I'd say sometimes I come off come off as rude, mm. but I never, even if I'm socially awkward, I never scroll on my phone or meet, meet, with new people, which yeah. I think is it took yeah, ages for me to true. train. Mm. But like I think that is the height of rudeness. Mm. But I understand when people do it because they're awkward because mm. I kind of relate because mm. I used to do that, and then I'm just like looking but when I see other people do it, I'm like that's so rude. Mm. I think socially awkward people are just the best thing ever. <laughs> like it's just so cute and it's just so cute. It's just so good. I'd be more socially anxious than socially awkward yeah. but sometimes I'm socially awkward and it's just so funny being socially it's just really funny because it's just like I'm so awkward right now yeah. it's just like I don't know what to say I know but sometimes <laughs> like because I was so the solution I thought I wasn't mm. so then it's not funny yeah yeah until exactly. Ashley said it to me Ashley was like oh yeah you're like really socially awkward mm. sometimes I kind of was like Am I? Yeah, yeah, that's so good. <laughs> but yeah. I'd literally be standing there like this. Because you probably just thought that you were just like if wearing people. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm like blending dessert. in. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, I get that as well. I think that I like, I am cynical about people, but I think that I'm really just like, oh, like I hate being here and I don't want to spend time with these people. But it's just because I'm, it's just a coping mechanism because I'm just too awkward to join in. Mm. And I feel too self-conscious to join in. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But how to drop um, friends. I'm so good at it. I think that you have to do it gradually. I don't think you should just take it off all in one. Yeah. G do it gradually. I pe some people say like, I've been friends with people and they're like, I'd prefer if someone just was like, I don't want to be your friend anymore. But I would fucking hate that. Sorry, yeah. Like, I would hate if someone was like, I just don't. People like, like that in theory, but I really say that, no. Exactly, they're just upset anyways, that like yeah. they don't want to be their friend. But I'd rather someone just gradually turn it off because then I'll just get the hint to be like, okay. Mm. So I think just, gradually just I, I don't know what else to say just gradually stop kind of confiding in them don't put as much energy into them don't exclude them because exclusion i think is the worst i think exclusion is the meanest thing in the whole but world but it's like if you're if you don't want to be friends with someone one-on-one -on -one, that's totally fine yeah but it's so different to cut it's someone so off completely exactly. if they haven't done anything that's yeah. like what's the word 
really bad, yeah. like really bad. Yeah. As in, like they weren't being racist, homophobic, yeah. offensive. Yeah. And it's, yeah. if there's no offensible um, crime that they committed, yeah. Yeah. then there's no reason for you to cut them off from the whole group or exactly. like excommunicate them. Exactly. You can still reply to their messages yeah. and stuff, but that doesn't mean you exactly. you have to meet up meet up with them at yeah. one, one on one. Uh, exactly. Because then you're just being mean. Exactly. Because there's a nice way to do it. You know what I mean? And as Ramda says, do what you will with people, to, but don't let them out of your heart. Like it's like you don't have to be friends with anyone you don't want to, and remember that you don't have to have anyone in your life you don't want to but there's a nice way and there's a nasty way do you know what I mean always treat them with civil kindness and don't give them too much of your energy but still obviously send them love and kindness and stuff like that like I have cut off friends before but they wouldn't have even noticed that yeah. I did it because it's like I'm not well I always move country so that's probably why yeah. it's like much easier yeah. to get away from yeah. but like I Clearly, I'm not putting as much effort into yeah, the friendship, but it's exactly. not to the point where it's I'm being horrible yeah, and nasty to them. Exactly, it's exactly. just like I don't have the energy to put any emotion or exactly. effort into this yeah, anymore. Yeah. So um, I'm just not gonna do it. Yeah, exactly. Um, and the only time I felt like someone was cutting me off was with Josh. Remember? Mm. But it was because like he wasn't putting effort in. But I, I would have been way more hurt if he randomly was like, I don't want to be your friend yeah. because that obviously wasn't true. Mm. Like because we're still yeah, friends. Yeah, I think I, and as well, I think the other person knows. <laughs> Like the other person, because when you don't want to be someone's friend anymore, it's usually because like, unless it's like they're being really like toxic to you or whatever. But if it's just like you guys don't really connect anymore, like the other person kind of knows that you're not really connecting. So mm -hmm. if you're like drifting a little bit, then the other person's actually going to drift away as well. And then mm -hmm. it's kind of kind of become like a mutual thing rather than just like you. It's only it. in rare cases when people are like, no, don't yeah, leave me. Exactly, it's yeah. like, and I'd, ne I'd never get that. someone, I'd never get that close with someone yeah. who, because usually you know, it takes a while, like really long for me to have like a best friend mm. really involved in my life mm. because I'm so skeptical skeptical since mm. I was a teenager because mm. I'm just like oh they're gonna turn on me yeah. any second like I only started making best friends when I was probably 21 oh, coffee is so good. um and they have to be a really certain type of person for me to like open my heart heart up completely like Emer was so easy for mm. some reason because mm. I think she's just like the type of person who doesn't care like mm. it was way easier mm. um but anyone else like I kind of have no interest it takes really long for me to like create a um create a bond which was why it's kind of hard to make friends in London like I have loads of friends from London, but I wouldn't say any of them were like my BFFs yeah. or someone I talked to every single day. Yeah, yeah. Um, so even if I like wanted to cut myself off or drop a friend from London, it literally wouldn't be noticed. Yeah. It wouldn't be noticed because they weren't really integrated into your life. Yeah, it's yeah. like not noticeable at all. So I, I suppose it's how you treat your relationships to begin with. Yeah, and then and you'll learn from that experience as well after dropping a friend that the next time you make one, you'll like be more wary of it. Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm trying to do as well. I'm like trying to because I'm very like. I'm very like I'm someone's my best friend straight away I'm really like and then it's a really intense relationship and then I just get in too quick and then I don't actually like evaluate the situation mm -hmm. before I let them into my life and family so I'm trying to like be more slow and steady if you know what I mean because I yeah. love the excitement of like do you know what I mean? Intense relationships. Or? It's like getting in relate like toxic like, relationships. Yeah, it's when like when they start exactly. off really, really intense. Most mm -hmm. likely, it's not going to end well exactly. because you don't know them. Yeah, you don't know exactly. them well enough. Exactly. So it's you like the idea more than, than the actual thing. Yeah. It's more like I want a best friend, or I want you to be my best friend. It's not mm -hmm. like I love you so much as a person that you happen to be my best friend. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's like, and also you have to be as well you have to be intentional with all your relationships. I feel like so many of my relationships, I'm just like yeah okay like I'll go out with them but like I don't really like respect them or like them and because I'm not intentional I'm not like I'm gonna hang out with this person because I want to see them or I'm gonna make time for this cause, person because I want to see them I find it, I, I'm just real like oh yeah I'll just hang out with this person do you know what I mean it's so important to be intentional with relationships because then you can know that you actually really like your friends your friends are people that you should want to become and your friends are so, so people that you should always be able to tell why you really like them do you know what mm -hmm. I mean because they're in your life and everyone in your life is it's affects you so much your friends affect you so much so it's so important who you, who you let into you are life. basically you're a reflection of the people who are in your life i so. agree and also it's like it, you, I can only have so much energy for so many people. Mm. Like I can only really have my family and then my and then like one or two friends. Do you know what I mean? And like even then, it's like I see them every three weeks. But like I can have like a boyfriend or a best friend that I will just see all the time. But like any more than that, I don't have enough energy. I'm really selective on who's in my life because it's like I have I just don't have any energy for that many people. Do you mm. know what I mean? So whenever you cut off one person, like another person is 
directly there straight away so you won't be alone and don't ever be friends with someone because you're afraid you're afraid of being alone yeah you have to protect yourself exactly how do you know when it is the right time to move in with your partner my advice has always been to do it straight away whenever you feel like um, whenever you personally feel like it's ready rather than going by some sort of guideline. Yeah, I, 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 yeah I feel like with relationships... Because like, uh, it speeds up the process of how you will be with that person yeah, in the future. Yeah, yeah. So I don't understand yeah. this whole like ways to move in with yeah, each other yeah. because you're actually just prolonging the heartache mm -hmm. that will inevitably happen. Mm -hmm. If you cannot co in cohabitate with someone and you are a traditional uh, relationship with sort of person if you want to get married and live with them eventually mm -hmm. you might as well do it as soon as That's possible so that you know yeah. Yeah. because I don't want to waste my time mm -hmm. like I don't understand when these couples are like they're seeing each other every second weekend and then they eventually move in t with each other and realize they fucking hate each other mm -hmm. you've just wasted all that time where you could have just moved in straight away yeah. and figured it out yeah. so that's how I tend yeah. to live my life but obviously some people could look at my life and be like well you're a fucking disaster mm -hmm. like you always have failed relationships but I'm glad that I got that out of, all out of the way because yeah. I'm like young and yeah. have found the exactly. person I want to be with exactly so like that's how I wanted it, it to happen yeah yeah I yeah I, I, I don't really know to be honest I I, I um, I'm kind of scared because I was like in my last race she was really kind of pounded, so I'd be more scared to do something like to to see them every day mm. do you know in my next race I'm going to be like I see them like twice a week because I'm so scared of getting like overly dependent. But um, the way your relationship was set up, if you had your own space that you were living in together, you would be able to be independent within that space cohabiting. Yeah. Um, I don't think I would though, but that's me. But it would it would take you a few uh, obviously it takes a few months mm -hmm. out of the like honeymoon of living together mm -hmm. phase, but inev like eventually you're able to create your own spaces separately mm -hmm. and you're able to like being able to be yourself around the person that you love is such yeah. a good sign. Yeah that they're the person for you. Mm. Like I, when I lived with my, I wouldn't be able to record a YouTube video if he was in the apartment. Yeah. I was scared to yeah. go take a shit. Yeah. I wasn't able to fire it around him. Like that's how, I don't want to live my life like that. No. It's horrible. Oh my God, it's horrible. And like now me and Jason, we literally no, watch. No, but me. you should like encourage each other to do shit like that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. It should be good. Like, yeah. Like this is good. Like the, you're actually just the grossest person ever. Mm. Yeah, definitely. And with ja like Jason watches, washes my arse for me the fucking shower so and we watch my youtube videos together oh, you know so before i'm like before i upload it that's, that's so cute that's so cute <laughs> he's like am i in it that's so cute <laughs> <laughs> he definitely always gives to the first season <laughs> yeah he's, no he probably rewatches watches them and he's like yeah it's so good <laughs> i just think that if you're just asking someone when you should move in with them like oh, i can't tell you when to move in with your boyfriend just do it whatever it feels yeah, right yeah whenever I you feel want like to you can't be like you should do this you should do this in someone else's relationship it completely depends on what kind of relationship it is mm. some some people are really like i don't know if i like someone after you know because mm. we're really like we know straight away the first day we've met them not like you know what i mean but like some people are actually slow burners and they're like i don't know if i like them i don't know if they like them mm. so when you when it feels right for you then do it i feel like i catch feelings too quick do mm. i just see the best in people or is it seriously toxic of me health <laughs> So <laughs> uh, wait, okay, wait. I catch feelings too quick. I, I feel like I was like this when I was just newly single. Yeah. I literally would start seeing a guy and be like, I think I'm in love with them. Yeah. But then I after about a month of knowing them, I was like, wait a minute. Yeah. I'm horrible. Know, I wanna know if she's like she catches feelings and then she's like no or she catches feelings and then like no. Yeah, yeah, I, I don't know. It depends on the situation, doesn't yeah. it? But I'd say that is just because like your heart is completely open. Yeah. And you're not like protecting yourself or whatever, but you're sometimes you will get hurt in that process. Yeah. And usually it's like if you're catching feelings too quick, it's not for the actual person. It's yeah, the fantasy you've made up in your head. I agree. Completely. And what they're showing you. Like Jason was completely different when we started first seeing each other to like who he is now. Yeah. And like who yeah, he was when we were best friends yeah. and who he is and now. And what you like about him and stuff. Yeah, yeah, it's like, and I'm I'm sure I give off different energy as well. Yeah. Like we don't do the same thing. Yeah. To show our affection and love for each other is completely different how it was yeah. at the start. Yeah. Like you're peacocking basically when you first meet someone yeah. to try court yeah. them into bed. Exactly. Oh yeah, so, for sure. You have to be wary of, like, yeah. in, in those situations mm. because it's not actually, you're not catching feelings mm. for them. Yeah. It's like the he, facade he gets, they're putting yeah, on. Yeah, the best version of them. Uh, yeah. I don't understand. I know I just said that I catch feelings for people straight away, but I'm so particular. Like, I just never like people really ever to, unless, unless I'm in love with them. And I know straight away. I, I don't understand those things, but it, you, just like you said, you idealize them in your head. You're not actually, it's nothing to do with the other person. Mm. It's something, it's a need to feel validated or some some un, some emptiness inside you that you feel like is going to be filled with another person, with this other 
other person that you've made up inside your head. You need to realize where that's coming from and then realize that this person isn't going to fill the void for you. It's more important to focus on, do I actually like this person or do I just, am I just obsessed with wanting them to like me? Mm. I think that's a big thing that, uh, and as well, uh, a lot of uh, people, a lot of women, I think mostly, uh, go for men that we know eventually or inevitably that are gonna hurt us because we wanna like reaffirm this like negative belief about ourselves and then uh, like I'll get obsessed with like wanting someone to like to like me or fancy me rather than actually wanting to get to know them wanting to get to know them and I just want everyone to like be in love with me. Do you know what I mean? I think that's where because women place place the, place their value on um, how, we're, how we're like how we look and how how much people want to have sex with us yeah um because that's like the only way we get attention off men most of the time oh that's how I do. okay figuring out who you want to be and how you want to present yourself uh, uh, is that how i was reading it no no no, no the other one <laughs> we already answered it that's what i meant to say sometimes i'm talking to jason and i'm like do you know when the thing um let's say, yeah, and I don't fit it, and he's like, "What?" So good. <laughs> but you know when you do that, sometimes people are like, "I know exactly." Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I'm like, That's "You so, not? Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm like, come on. But sometimes he can. Yeah, and then he comes and then back it's to so me, good. and we're just like, "I am." Um, it's so yeah. good. Yeah. Figuring out who you want to be and mm. how you want to present it's so hard with fast fashion trends. I think not thinking about it. Best way to go. So good. So good. So good. It's actually so hard once you look into it because sometimes I feel like I want to be a type of person and then I go on my phone, I'm on TikTok or Pinterest or whatever. I'm like, this is because what I, it's what I'm seeing on my phone. Yeah. And it's like, oh, I'm aspiring to be this person that's unattainable yeah. because I'm getting fed that mm -hmm. all the time. And it's like, if you look, look like me and dress like me and act like me, mm -hmm. you'll be so much happier. Yeah, yeah. Whereas like, I'm completely fine yeah. how I am. Like I have a lot of healing to do or whatever. But like the type of person that I am, the personality, the clothes that I wear, it's fine. Mm -hmm. Like, it, no one actually fucking cares. Yeah, I think that it's like, I, every time I see a pretty girl on TikTok that I get jealous of, what I do is just go, well, they're not me, they're not me, they're not me, they're not me, they're not me. I honestly do, it's not like I'm like, I don't even care, but like, I think, I, I'm not even joking, just not think about how you want to present yourself, because you're never going to be satisfied if you're mm. like, I want to look like this, you're yeah. never going to be satisfied. So I think just like, going with the flow and being like oh some days i want to dress like this some days i want to dress like this i think that's so much more fun than like uh, confining yourself to mm -hmm. like one style or one type of person like that's boring and also it's completely unachievable because you're not just one person and if you identify yourself so much with your clothes and what you wear and like how you present then you're just fucked because it's not real it's a persona and it's made up mm. do you know what i mean because you're thinking about how am i going to make this up so just going with the flow and being like i want to dress like a boy today i want to dress like a slut today i want to dress like like a lady today do you know what i mean going with the flow and whatever clothes that you like even if you've dress trendy like everyone dresses trendy even though they're like i'm not trendy like just try not shop at urban outfitters you know what i mean don't um, say that jason will lose his job oh yeah sorry sorry i mean um forever 21 <laughs> um, just go to charity shops and then just seeing what you like and just being like i like that i'm just gonna buy it who cares yeah you know, just just chill out like it's fine that's all i'll say yeah it's just not a big out. deal it's not, it's a, not deal. a big deal and you don't have to when i was younger i was like oh my god okay this is the type of person i'm gonna be like mm. i mean my best friend would be like okay like we're gonna do this i'm gonna be a rock chick. yeah and like we, we're gonna be these girls and i always try to do that i was like i'm gonna be like effie and then i'm gonna be like really sad and like dress like this and everyone's gonna be like this like that doesn't that's not realistic and it doesn't work you're just yourself and that's uh, all you are you're just yourself mm. so you just have to make do with what you have get clothes that flatter your figure get like clothes that make you feel good and that's all you can do yeah being pregnant as well, like I literally just want to wear stuff that's uh, comfortable, yeah. and it's made me. It has made me appreciate clothes though a lot more because I'm like I miss the way I used to dress mm -hmm. and having the freedom to dress however I yeah. want because. I'm so limited now. Yeah. Like I only can wear elasticated trousers, yeah. and in this heat, yeah. all I want to wear is a pretty dress, yeah. and I don't fit into most of them, or I just look ridiculous. Yeah. It's just like, it's yeah. like, oh my yeah. god! <laughs> so like, the time yeah. it's like, why is this hot <laughs> air balloon no, no, trying to wear this dress? No, no. It has made me realize like what my actual style mm. is or what I like to wear, and it's literally mm. just to be comfortable and like yeah. what makes me feel nice. Exactly. And sometimes it's influenced by trends. Mm. And, but the thing is, like, not to get so worked up about it. Like I, dre I, yeah. I b uh, buy second hand as much as possible mm. so like it doesn't actually make a huge difference mm. whereas the majority of the time it's actually just something that I want to wear because yeah. I want to wear exactly. it. Exactly. And then of course if you're going you're gonna to get influenced by trends a little exactly. bit. Like we're 
we're literally cogs in this yeah. capitalist exactly. machine. It's and also, also it's impossible not to follow trends. Especially that you're worried about following trends means that like you're not like just that girl who just follows trends. Do you know what I mean? Mm. And, like if you're worried about it, then you're not. And yeah, and also I remember like as well like I can't no matter how hard I try I cannot look put together and yeah. like I will try but I'm just not that girl like I just can't look put together like it's just not me so you just make do what you have I'm the messy girl and that's fine I'm gonna be hot being the messy girl do you know what I mean and if you're the clean girl be the fucking clean girl do you know mm. what I mean that was the hardest for me because I like really really wanted that aesthetic mm. in the Matilda mm. Durf like mm. crispy shirts mm. and I just yeah. don't iron my yeah. clothes yeah. and my hair is always frizzy yeah, like I can just never even if I tried really yeah. hard and got same. my hair blow dried same. I would look so same. horrible same. the next day same. so it just never works out and same. that is what's on trend right now yeah. and i see all girls walking around i'm like they look so mm. good and so but jealous. i actually but i actually then just go i'm like it's grand because i because i just look so different then yeah cool. yeah like looking different is what you want to do like do you know what i mean um yeah and one one side of my head i'm like same. i want to be different but then i i especially me with too. women i want to fit in like yeah. i want to feel a part of the yeah. community and yeah. be able to talk about things yeah. and share and yeah. all like i'm over this whole like I'm fucking unique. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, I just yeah. want to be like every woman. Yeah, I want to be accepted yeah. by everyone. I want to but be like women. women love you for being yourself. Yeah, that's true. Women are, yeah, accepting. Yeah. But like when yourself. I'm with, like, you know, Lauren, my friend Lauren, yeah. like, I actually want to kill, like, sorry, it's so gross. <laughs> but I'm actually like, oh my God, I want to smash my head against the wall because it's like, oh, I think I look good. And then she's just like the most put together person I've ever, ever seen in my life. She just always looks like she just got out of the hairdressers and got her nails done. Oh my God, and, like, yeah, yeah. Done. Like, she just always looks good and she's like I look so bad like I didn't wash my hair for two days yeah and I'm like shut the fuck up like she just looks perfect mm -hmm. and I'm like I wish I'd looked at like that but I'm just like at the same time I'm me and she's her do you know what I mean and I'm not gonna like there's no point in being like I want to look like that you just have to work with yeah. what you have do you know what I mean yeah I always thought as well I was like if I have loads of money that's when I look put together yeah, yeah. and when I was spending so much money I was getting a lash lift every week mm -hmm. like my eyebrows laminated I had hair extensions getting my hair blow dried in the hairdressers buying the clothes that I wanted and then it's like one day when I was drinking I fell off a bike and got a fucking black eye oh my do you know God. what I mean yeah. so it was like what's the fucking yeah, point exactly. I'm, just, I'm just a mess exactly like, I'm, just, exactly. I'm just a constant mess or like your makeup will sweat off like <laughs> yeah. that was always me and like when I was younger it was like oh I got my makeup, makeup done but it would always sweat off and I was yeah. like how can the other girls just have it or it separate around your nose yeah, yeah. exactly I um, was just like it just sweats off or I mm. just like wipe my eye or something like, and I want to be one of those people who like buys all the shirts detail really really nice hourglass makeup and stuff mm -hmm. and like have really but it's like I just look weird mm. with loads of makeup yeah, on yeah. especially because I have freckles too it's like I'm clearly trying to cover them up mm. whereas now I have my base on and then do a freckle yeah. over to like accentuate yeah. them and it's you know, like you never look have the clean girl yeah. aesthetic if you have blemishes yeah, which are like yeah. freckles exactly. doesn't fit in with yeah, it yeah. but that's just like one of those things that just is me it's it's me yeah exactly you know exactly. and my wavy hair mm. like it's just co constantly exactly. wavy yeah. but the thing as well the thing is I'm sure there's some people out there who are like I want to look like them. Oh my god! They're comparing sure, themselves like to me. That. So yeah. So the advice, the conclusion is nothing. It's just, just nothing. Just be yourself. Just work with what you what 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 you have. Yeah. And I was so scared as well coming into motherhood. I was like, I have to dress like conservative now. Mm. Like kind of freaking out. Mm. Then I was like, no, I'm gonna be so hot and cool. Mm. Exactly. Because I want my as well, oh my god, especially because I'm having a daughter. Mm. I'm so uh, particular about the clothes that I'm. Because you know I'm always selling shit on Depop. I used to. Me and Jason were constantly doing it. Mm. But now with the stuff I have, I'm intentional with it. Whereas like. Would she want to want me to keep this so she can inherit it and wear, yeah, it, wear it in twenty yeah, years? Yeah. And is she going to be proud of me mm. now as well? So that's a, a, a bit more fun mm. when I'm like yeah. shopping for clothes. Yeah. So now I'm like really protective over all the clothes I have. Mm. Like I don't want to sell anything because yeah. I just really like it. Yeah. And it's not it's not just one particular style. It's like loads of different exactly. ones. Yeah. Telling someone you have feelings for them without ruining the friendship. I think if you have feelings for your friend. The friendship's already ruined. Yeah. Like, oh my god, that's so true. There's nothing there to ruin because yeah, you're so still true. past the platonic that's friendship. So, so just that's do so it. That's so true. I I don't think I've ever been in this position. I've been the um, I've been the person that they like. Oh. Like, yeah. But it did ruin the friendship because you were just like no. I was just like it was horrible. Oh. He was my best friend. I'm all for equality, but the dynamic is so different yeah. if a guy friend yeah. confesses a feeling but, for a girlfriend yeah. because women are constantly it's like impossible for men not to objectify or sexualize us. Yeah. So if we have a platonic male friendship, it's yeah. like 
gold dust. Yeah, oh yeah. And yeah, yeah. you, if you interview any, statistically, if you interview any man, it's yeah. like, have you ever thought about having sex with this person, this person, this person? It could literally be their brother's wife. Yeah. It's always going to be yes. Yeah. It's almost impossible yeah. for them not yeah. to imagine having sex yeah. with the woman yeah. when, when they first meet them. Yeah. So that's why I think it, this was a girl who asked this question. Yeah. So I think it's fine yeah. for the other way around. Where if it was a guy, I'd say you have to reevaluate why you yeah. actually because it, it could be just your dick talking yeah, exactly. rather than you actually. In that case, it them. was it, it wasn't his dick talking. Like he's so respectful. And okay. Nice. I had another friend as well. Like he didn't like me, but he just wanted to fuck me, and we were friends. And he was such a prick and so disrespectful and horrible because he's just a prick and I hate him. But Jason, like he said, he never thought of me in that way, mm. which was so. Yeah, I was just so like, nice. oh, but a challenge yeah exactly bring it on yeah which made me respect him so much more which mm. was like why i liked mm. him in the first mm. place because we were mm. friends for four years without mm. him ever making a pass at me mm. whereas with other guys it's like it's so well you, you're just like i wouldn't want to be drunk with them do you know what i mean yeah like, i wouldn't want to be drunk with them i wouldn't want to do this say this in front of them i wouldn't want to you know what i mean because they're like oh they're gonna take the wrong way or like mm. i always get scared that my guy friends are gonna think that i'm trying to fuck them not the other way around yeah exactly um, it's like you have to change affectionate and loving mm. i'm like i'm like that with women so when i'm like i treat women and men the same where it's like i'm affectionate with both of them so then it's like men take it weird or like it's like they're questioning it in their head yeah and it's just like that's not my problem that you're being inappropriate yeah you're making it weird not me and some guys are so delusional it's yeah, like if you're yeah. nice to them they're literally like they must want to have sex yeah, with me exactly exactly so bizarre yeah. red flags and friendships can i borrow a jumper you're cold i just feel i'm self-conscious oh personally for me from my own experience is like asking me for favors like will you share this oh my god yeah there was one girl who would do it like I mean constantly with the with the you know the sad eyes emoji like the yeah so we share this they got obviously the cut off I hate them yeah but I I wasn't that close with them to be honest but like I it really it's fucking she would ask me to share stuff like her reels that she'd made on her Instagram what? like not a charitable thing or like something for work it was like yeah, I feel like I need a or like her posts <laughs> what yeah will you share this okay wait that is in fairness sometimes Ashley. <laughs> See, me and Ashley yeah, are close enough. You know me attention. and Ashley are close enough where I can say no. Yeah. Where, like once Ashley sent me this thing and it was like, will you share my friends go fund me for her dog to get surgery? And I go, Ashley, I'm sorry, no. So <laughs> I was good. like, I don't know who this person oh, is. I don't so care so about this dog that I've never met so before. I can't think of any other red flags. Maybe like it doesn't get on with my family, but they're like pretty obvious. Just when someone's like, oh my God, you're like famous. Not that I'm like, oh my God, I'm so famous. Like people are just using me for my clout. <laughs> I mean like people are just excited about, because I'm Keelan's sister, they're like excited about like the fact, they like they like the idea of being my friend instead of actually being my friend. Yeah. And they just agree with everything that I say and they don't actually have their own opinion. Mm. and they're just agreeing with everything I say that just shows that they would stab me in the back uh, if there was someone more uh, more valuable than I am oh, and yeah. that they value the wrong things and, and as if well, people that's... talk to me like I'm above them I fucking hate that you know when people say like I'm a people pleaser and that people think that's like a, a slightly good and uh, mm, bad characteristic yeah, to have yeah. but you're what you're describing that is what a people please people yeah. have misconstrued what that, mm. that term means yeah. but someone who literally is agreeable and someone could literally be bitching about their best friend yeah. and they're just nodding their head yeah. and going along with it yeah. that yeah. is what a people pleaser exactly. is so people I, and like i always see these tiktoks and like i'm stop, i'm stopping being a people yeah. pleaser it's like why are you proud like why are you no, saying that you because people think people being a people pleaser is like i always pay for the bill at the restaurant yeah. it's like no mm. that's not what a people pleaser mm -hmm. is like mm -hmm. it's literally not sticking up for yourself or having any morals mm -hmm. yeah it's a yeah it's not like not like a solid friend to have yeah like, someone that will have your back and someone that just goes with what everyone else is doing because they want to feel validated by other people mm. or that they like throw you under the bus just so they can feel good about themselves yeah that's what it is and it's all self-serving at the end of the day so they're not like being like i'm a people pleaser because i'm just so caring it's because yeah. they want to feel validation from the person that they're with mm. oh i find that so it's such a weak that's such a weak character yeah uh, I but you can't that stick too, up yeah. to your friends yeah but it's like other people shouldn't feel comfortable bitching about your friends yeah to you anyway. my friends no one would ever talk shit about my friends to me. Yeah. Or like, you know what I mean? Mm. And it's like... Emer's been in situations where like people have been whispering about stuff. A tattoo client would come in and kind of say something. And then Emer would stick up for me and she'd be like, Well, no, 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 that's not what I meant. You know what I mean? So good. Emer's just like, eh, no. So good. <laughs> like I could text Emer and be like, someone's being mean to me on TikTok. She'd be like, 
I don't even have TikTok. I'll download yeah, it right now. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. She's like, send me their yeah, Instagram yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. Like, that's the type of friend yeah. you want because that would be the type of friend that, that I am. Yeah, yeah. But so, me too, I, maybe I, some I, people don't too. value that, yeah. which I think is fucked up. Well, people just don't, like, as well, as I said before, aren't intentional with their friends. So they're just like, and people are so many people are more shallow than you think. Mm -hmm. Most people are shallow and they're just uh, being friends with people because uh, they it, they feel comfortable in, in on the social ladder. If you know mm. what I mean, they feel comfortable going places, and they have they have play, they have uh, uh, people to be with while they drink, do drugs, mm. and party together. So they and they feel safe because they feel cool. It's so common in, in Dublin. It's not actually. It's so common. It's not actually like, how are you? Like I actually care about you. It's so mm. common that it's not like I actually this. I actually care about you, and I want to be a good friend to you because I love you. I love you for this. I love you for this. I love you for this. And I want to be friends with you for. A long time it's just like okay whatever we're just friends with each other like let's just like have a drink do you mm -hmm. know what i mean actually taking the time to get to know someone and being intentional in a friendship is so important i don't like i know ellie says this but i really don't like it it's like well they didn't do anything to me yeah no i, I don't really, like that i either. really don't, I don't like, like that. that either i don't i don't i don't agree with being mean to someone for your friend or if your friend is like this person's like this and then you like take it as face value but like it's not like i'm being mean to the person but they were mean to me at some stage so i just don't uh, uh, like communicate with them yeah it, it, no, but but, it, but it's like it, it's like but that's like not trusting your friend's judgment i think as well yeah. i'm obviously going to talk to them and see and make up my own mind about them because i'm mm -hmm. not going to just listen to what someone else is saying about me but at the end of the day i have my friends back and i'm not going to become best friends with someone that is a, a shithead to my a shithead to my friend or as well another thing it's like sometimes in situations people would be nice to me and not nice to my friends because they're like Pina my creep sister do you know what I mean oh my god so it's like if someone says that to me or if someone's like rude to my friends I know exactly why do you mm -hmm. know what I mean and then I and then I take that and I'm like that just shows what kind of person they are do you know what I mean yeah red flag no I agree with that how do you deal with jealousy surrounding your romantic partner if you have any oh, these questions are so good yeah what I do uh, that helps the most try to figure out why I'm jealous of the person that I'm jealous of because it's usually a specific person. It's obviously completely nothing to do with them why you're jealous of them. It's not a reflection on who they are and your anger for them isn't a reflection on who they are but it's something that triggers you. I get jealous of really random girls. I think I get jealous of girls that I'm actually attracted to but I get jealous of girls who are like mellow and like chill and like chill, chill and like <laughs> really just like quietly funny and like just like laughs instead of makes the jokes. Yeah. They laugh at the jokes. Yeah. And they're like a laugh and they're like, oh, it just makes me so jealous. And yeah, girls that are just chill. Is it because you want to be like that? Or yeah. Because you were attracted to someone it, like that? I think it's because, no, I think it's because I want to be chill and I always wanted to be like chill and like one of the boys. <laughs> but like I can't, but like I can't, if you know what I mean? Yeah. And so, because I can't, I can't be contained. Like I'm shy, but I can't, I'm so. Yeah, I can't be tamed by the I can't be tamed. So I'm just like so so obnoxious and stuff or yeah. whatever and it's usually like something you're jealous of it's like something you want in that person you're like i want to be chill like them or i want to be mm -hmm. like this I, I, and it's just knowing that your partner loves you for not being like that and that's why they're with you my partner loves me because I'm so obnoxious and loud. Like they love that about me. They love every part of me. Do you know what I mean? Mm. They're not like, oh, I'm hanging out with this person because so I wish you were more like that. They, they, they love all of me, and they're in love with me, not the other person. You know what I mean? They come home to me and they hold me. They don't hold the other person. Physically, I don't know how to fucking deal with that. But as well, if you're jealous of someone outside of a relationship, I saw this like video, this TikTok, and this woman was like, jealousy is ambition. So it's like, oh like, yeah, exactly. I want to be more like that person and say it do it in a nice way and try be happy for them even though it's so hard but try just let go of this like also with your partner it's like you're holding on to them so much you're like they're mine they're mine they're mine they're mine they're mine they're mine but they're not yours and they never will be yours so you have to just take a deep breath a breath and let go and just be like whatever will happen it will happen i trust that with or without my partner and with or without my partner's validation that i am perfect just the way I am and I'm confident in who I am mm. do you know what I mean with or without my partner not that anything's gonna happen but that's where it's coming from you think that your partner's gonna leave you and then you're gonna 
be uh, and then you're you're just a piece of shit because your partner doesn't like you and they prefer someone else that doesn't that's not you know what i mean that's not a reflection on your value you're completely valued just as by yourself so you just have to take a deep breath let it go and just be like i am perfect just the way i am it's really difficult though like it's so hard and it it's like something that i find it's just one of those things that makes you want to fucking go ah! Yeah, it's hard. You don't. I, I'm so like with everything in my life. Like I'm like, okay, how do I deal with it? And I have rational kind of like things to say, like affirmations to mm -hmm. say every time I feel upset about something. Um, I can rationalize it, but with jealousy, I find it so hard because I'm like, especially with like sexual attraction, it's like I don't know how to deal with my partner being sexually attracted to other people because I'm not like that. Like I'm not like sexually attracted to really to other people, and I don't know how they work. Especially for a man, I don't know how they work. Mm. But also that thing that I was saying as well, women I think are more tunnel vision with men. Maybe I don't know if I'm making a generalization, but I feel like women are more tunnel vision with men. They just want one man and then men are more like greedy with all of their women they want loads of women but that's because we're conditioned different ways where you're more valuable as a man if you um have multiple sexual partners have multiple uh, female sexual partners you're more valuable and you feel more validated and when you're a woman you feel more valuable when you just have one sexual partner and i feel like that is like a, a for a man is like a subconscious desire to feel validated rather than them actually being like objectifying these women and even like my old boyfriend he's he said something like that he was like he was like when you're a man and you're like encouraged to be like oh she's sexy she's sexy and you don't even believe it you just say it because you want to fit in if you know what I mean oh, God. no but he wouldn't but like it's like that's yeah. what it's like where it's like you, and even like on Love Island it's like all the lads love the girls they're with but when they're with the lads they're like yeah she's sexy but they don't actually mean it yeah, they yeah, yeah. They, none of them want to say it, but they're just saying that and then they kind of convince each other mm -hmm. because of they're that so I, weak. it's so weak it's so weak because of that like because of that conditioning but men are so like so they don't understand but I think that's from that like old like fucking traditional thing of like men mm. need a lot of women to feel like they're like they're real men like that's real masculinity wanting to have sex with everyone do you know what i mean i think as well what contributes a lot to jealousy is the only time i felt jealous in relationships is when my partner wasn't giving me reassurance because mm. i'm actually not jealous mm. at all compared mm. to like if i'm talking to my friends mm about yeah my I've relationship. Never heard you be jealous. I'm like not you know it's a really out of character for me to be jealous. Yeah. Jason also almost wants me to yeah. so I'm reassuring yeah. that I love him. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Because in my head I'm like I'm in a relationship with you. I'll never I'm never going to be looking at ever anyone else or like looking for a better option because if I ever get to a stage in a relationship where I'm looking for things from someone else, I'm gonna break up with them. So I expect the same yeah, from my partners. Yeah. So I'm like, what what fucking idiot is gonna stay with me if they want to be with someone else? Mm -hmm. I'm like, go off and you know be happy with someone else then. Mm -hmm. Like, exactly. don't waste my fucking time. Yeah, yeah. So that's why I don't expect that from other people. And I feel like I'm good at choosing partners that aren't going to be like that. Yeah. The only times I have been jealous is when towards the end of our relationship, he was really like interested in, he wasn't really interested in me anymore. He was like paying attention to other people. He wanted to stay out really late. He wasn't coming home with me. I woke up in a few times a night where he was like texting other girls, look, zooming in, you know, like looking at girls on Instagram and zooming into their pictures. Yeah. Like while his arm was yeah. around me and I was, yeah. he thought I was asleep, yeah. you know? Yeah. So it's like you were, I had a right to be jealous then. Yeah. And then the other, course, only other time yeah. I've been jealous with Jason is because I'm like the opposite of the actual type. Yeah, his yeah, physical okay. type, like, yeah. well, his exes, and also I just know from being his friend, like the type of people he's attracted to. Because yeah. when he was single, he'd be like, oh, I fancy her so much, and that's how he communicated. Whereas I don't really have a type, so it's like I fall in love with the type of person they yeah. are. So I was kind of like jealous about that when he would make a friend who I know is his physical type, and I'd be like fuming over it. Yeah. And I'm just like, I know, but I know intuitively myself, it's like if we broke up, you would probably get with her. Yeah. It's just like, I just know that as a fact, yeah. you know what I mean? But at the same time as well, with that, it's like when you are single, you, when you're single in your relationship, you 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 think completely differently. And if you're in a mm. relationship with someone and then after the relationship you got with someone, that doesn't mean the whole time you were thinking about yeah, it. Yeah, no, exactly, yeah. But that's why it made me jealous. Because yeah. he had no interest, obviously, because when he's in a relationship, he's like you, what you were saying, the yeah. tunnel vision thing. Yeah. He would never be, even I know from being friends with him, he would never think of other girls being like, oh, they're sexy or like, I want to have sex with them, I'm attracted to them. He it would literally, the thought of it would make him sick. He's just, his sexuality is just completely me. So, 
Yeah, it does depend on the reassurance you're getting from your the partner. Is me, I, love that. I don't know how to deal with my boyfriend being sexually attracted to other people. But like, if you, someone else's beauty isn't the absence of your own. Like, you can both have big tits, you know, and you can just take the compliment without thinking who has bigger or better tits. Yeah, I know, I'm just insane, but I mean like, <laughs> I'm just like, do boys just look at girls and they're like, nice tits? Like that actually makes me, even still, thinking my ex-boyfriend doing that, I'm like, that upsets me. Oh my god. Oh, that's horrible. Yeah. Be micro out of it. Yeah, I hope so. Just accepting the fact that, like, it's fine if your partner is trying to appreciate someone else's beauty. It's mm. just like... Like, Jason would never be like, she's so hot or she's so sexy. Like, we just wouldn't yeah, use that language. Yeah, I couldn't imagine him... He's just like, she's the best, like with Love Island, he's like, India's the best looking, you know? Yeah. And that's like non-offensive yeah, to yeah, me at all, because yeah, yeah. I also agree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. like, she is the best yeah, looking. Yeah, like, it depends if it's in a gay way, which is what my ex used to say in a gay way. He'd be like, yeah! <laughs> <laughs> uh, but like, if it's in a gay way, then it's like, fine. Yeah, like, non-derogatory. Do you think, though, that, J yeah, non-derogatory. Do you think that, though, Jay looks at girls and he's like, damn. I can imagine him looking at girls and being like, oh, she's so beautiful, or like, she's really good looking. Yeah. But I can't imagine him being like so sexy hot yeah see that's hot what, little yeah. bitch see you know? that's what would upset me i wouldn't mind if oh she's pretty and like a nice oh do you think the little tips in a relationship should be talked about or just forgotten about in little tips there's always a deeper meaning and it's, you're always fighting about the same thing um so i think that the little arguments aren't a big deal and everyone goes through that because you're not going to agree on everything mm -hmm. but um just figure out what the deeper meaning is and try and just acknowledge that it's that where, where at the end of the day it comes down to like you don't feel loved enough by them or you don't feel appreciated by them if it's like you know you get annoyed at them for not like cleaning up after themselves it's like that's usually i don't feel like you appreciate what i do for you mm. instead of oh i'm pissed off do you know what i mean so yeah there's to figure out the deeper meaning to it and that will kind of solve the bigger kind of thing because nothing is ever in a relationship when you're fighting it's never a um not a big deal yeah exactly it, like it, it when i exactly. have a fight with jason for example yeah. if he's like not doing any domestic labor in the house my love language is acts of service mm. like i want him to do things mm. without me having to yeah. ask so then if i'm not getting loved in the love language that i feel loved in mm. i not like he's not loving me mm. then it's yeah. like you're not showing me that you love me mm. um so it is that and that is a big deal because mm. like in your relationship you should feel loved exactly all the time. and when someone's being like when so like if you fought for example over dishes or something mm. and if someone's being like this is not a big deal like it's dishes it's like obviously it is a big deal do you know what i yeah. mean that's annoying and like knowing uh, making sure that your partner knows that it's like obviously deep deeper meaning and, and being able to articulate that mm. you know what i mean being like i don't feel loved and my friend and her boyfriend got in a fight because um she was like in the car and she was like she watches my videos so she's gonna hear but she was in the car and um she was like to her boyfriend she's always on the ox and she always like puts things on that he'd like and she'd like and then she was like i'm actually gonna put something on for myself do you know what i mean <laughs> yeah, yeah. in her head and then she puts something on and he goes oh can you change this and then she was like and then she started crying <laughs> me and they got me. a huge fight over it she's like you just don't get it just don't speak to you like that it's so good <laughs> she's like i always do what you want to do with the little tiffs thing as well like for example if jason says something like mean about a girl and yeah. it kills, he could have said yeah. six months ago and i'd be like yeah. have a little giggle yeah. and be like haha so yeah. funny yeah if i also like you know agreed or whatever but now if he does that it's like and he's probably shocked because i give such a big reaction mm. i'm like don't speak about a woman like that especially as before when our fucking daughter comes yeah. i don't want you to talk ill yeah. about any woman yeah. I, I don't care if we both don't like them mm. it's fine we can agree with but we don't we don't speak badly mm. about any and he's just like but you're a bitch as well <laughs> so he's like good. but you bitch about so people too good. and i'm like yeah but now i don't want yeah, to like yeah. i don't imagine that was our daughter and someone was speaking yeah, out of them exactly. like especially with and i know it's so like Love Island, I think, creates probably so many fights for couples yeah, because yeah. it's like if you disagree on something, yeah. it's real. Like, that is how you actually view women yeah. and how you view the world, yeah. and it's so yeah. fucked up because exactly. it's a fucking social experiment. Yeah, exactly. So, if he's like Tasha's being a crybaby, yeah. I'm like, stop. Yeah. Like, she's actually getting bullied, yeah. and you have no idea how she's yeah. feeling. Yeah. Just because yeah. a woman has feel like a sensitive and has feelings doesn't mean she's a bad person, exactly. and you can't give out about that. Exactly. If you were getting treated the same way, you would react exactly the same. Yeah! Yeah! Yeah, that's what as well but being in a hetero relationship with a man there's always always going to be even if they're yeah. like the best progressive man ever yeah. there's always going to be underlying like sexist issues or, yeah. or how they view the world because they're like told to hate women i know and you just have to point it out and just like be like so you, you have to constantly teach yeah, them and exactly. to and them they have to like, be open to you teaching mm. them as well 
because it, it might seem like dramatic you bringing that up being mm. like you are saying this because you actually hate yeah, women it's a so you know, it's so subtle people. yeah it's like when guys go oh uh, you're not a crystal girl are you and then i go you're actually misogynist and here's why and mm. then they go you're ridiculous i'm just saying this it's like no the most smallest things that you say like how come a, ma a man can cry over uh, their team not winning in a football match and then it's like women l like to collect these rocks which is like not harming anyone it's actually like it doesn't it's cause riots. it's yeah it, like it literally it's like, it's like even, religion. If, even if it's not real even yeah. if there is no magical powers from them like it's not harming anyone like football matches are literally condone yeah. like riots bigotry exactly. racism exactly they're fucking horrible and like domestic abuse uh, cases increase if a football team either wins or loses so it's like men exactly. are so overly emotion emotional about these things that it actually that hurts matter, so. it hurts women exactly like we're not if we lose a crystal we're not beating up yeah, our husbands exactly. so, like, and then they go oh well like girls always like judge me off my star sign and then they're like mean to me based on i'm like i've never met any girl that's actually actually behaves yeah. like badly towards no. you because of their star sign like mm -hmm. there's jokes about it but no one actually would be like you're a piece of shit because you're a Capricorn, mm -hmm. even though you deserve it. But like, <laughs> I'm joking. But like, you know what I mean? It's all just like tongue in cheek. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. It's a joke. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Or it's like lighthearted. And like you, it, and they haven't met a girl like that. They're just trying to make it up. Just mm -hmm. to, there's like women are actually. Ever and then they're like, and then they're like, oh well, like I didn't even know much about it. Like I'm just like annoyed. And like I was just saying, like it's just my opinion. I'm like, and they're like, women are horrible too. Imagine we did the X thing, and it's like. Women are statistically higher, like higher at risk of getting murdered by their partners, and you're obsessed over like an ick video Literally. that actually isn't attacking you personally. Yeah. Like they really have no perspective mm. perspective over the bigger picture here. That's really really horrible and yeah. hard to watch yeah. because they're like, you want to be treated equal? Yeah. Like why don't we fucking fight each other then? It's like there's a different power, power yeah. dynamic because you're a a anatomi anatomically built stronger than women are. So fuck, literally exactly. fuck off. Unless exactly. I was a bodybuilder and then I could probably beat exactly. you. Exactly. I was actually very good at jiu jitsu. Lord. Say nothing. Okay, thanks for watching. I really want to have a coffee, but it'll make me anxious. Bye. Bye, guys.